Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. My last video on electric surfboards and e-foils got me thinking about a portable solar charging setup for electric skateboards and really any other electric rideable. After looking around and running some numbers, I came up with a setup that's only 11 pounds and can fully charge one of my chunky 324 watt hour batteries in as little as three to four hours. Whether for keeping your electric rideable charged for an extended stay in the backcountry or as an insurance policy while skate packing out in the middle of nowhere, a portable solar charging setup is a lot more feasible feasible than you might think. There's two key components to a successful portable solar charging setup. The first is, of course, your solar panel. I opted for a 120 watt panel that weighs in at around 10 pounds for just the solar panel. I'll put Amazon affiliate links to this and all the other parts I used in the description. And the second component is your solar charge controller, the device that takes the open circuit current and smooths it out for consumption by whatever it's charging. But here's the critical part. A standard solar charge controller for these smaller panels won't often be able to charge your Escape batteries. And the reason for this is that your solar panels don't generate a crazy high voltage. The panel I have maxes out at around 20 volts, and smaller panels might only use a 12 volt standard. And the solar charge controllers they come with will usually only smooth out to 12 volts or lower than the input voltage, known as a step down or buck converter. What we need in order to charge our Escape batteries is something that can up the voltage to match the charging output of battery chargers, which will generally be higher than the operating voltage of the batteries. For instance, my skate packing builds batteries output at 36 volts, but take a 40 2 volt charging current. And for this you need something called a step up or boost converter. And for this I found a relatively inexpensive one with reasonable reviews, though keep in mind that this one cannot charge anything rated lower than its input voltage. Swapping out the new solar charger with the old one is straightforward. The standard method for wiring connection seems to be screw terminals. Like you'd expect, you just loosen the screw as needed to release the wire, and you just detach the positive and negative wires from the old solar charge controller and connect them to the new one. The next step was to connect the output from the controller to the jack standard that my batteries take, and after some digging around, mine turned out to be a 5.5mm by 2.1mm DC jack. Yours will probably vary, but I found that they're generally not proprietary. They're one of many standards. To wire up my solar charge controller to my batteries, I just ran a set of wires to a screw terminal to DC jack adapter, and if you can't find an adapter like this that works for your particular charging standard, get the same one I did here, again link in the description, as the solar panel I bought uses the same 55 by 21 standard and comes with every adapter you could possibly need, just use one of these between your screw terminal adapter and your battery charge port. And now that everything's wired up, the last step is to make sure your charge controller output is set to your charging voltage. Mine happens to be 42 volts, but yours could be different. Check the back of your charger to see what yours is, as it could be higher or lower. I wouldn't worry too much about the output amps, as voltage is the one that really matters that you gotta make sure matches. The amount of amps going out just determines how quickly the battery will charge at that voltage. Although I definitely recommend not exceeding what your charger says on it in terms of amps, or what you know for certain your batteries can charge. Yet. From this point, you should be good to go. On a bright sunny day, lay your panels out, angle to the sun as much as you can, and make sure the charge controller loaded your correct settings and you should see it kick in and see watts start flowing into your battery. Don't be alarmed at the uh, loud fan in the controller unit as it kicks in to keep the onboard electronics cool. Now, under optimal conditions and assuming the panel is working exactly at its rated capacity, a 120 watt panel should theoretically be able to charge my 324 watt hour battery from empty to full in two hours and 45 minutes. Unfortunately, real life isn't so glamorous. These panels never seem to work at their full capacity. There's gonna be clouds and efficiency losses from heat and the DC to DC upscaling at the charge controller. So for planning's sake, plan on it taking twice as long as what the math says it will. In my instance, I would expect a fully charged battery in no less than five hours. I still have a lot of testing to do to get some real world numbers. So, you don't have to go with the same setup I did. The benefit to these setups is that you can scale them up or down as needed. Are you weight conscious and don't mind a bit of extra time spent charging? Drop down to a 60 watt panel and shave some weight and space. Do you wanna max out your charging without worrying that the efficiency loss is gonna slow you down at all? Get multiple panels and wire them in parallel to your charge controller. 
And if solar charging doesn't work for you, you can actually swap out the panels for other green energy generation methods. You can do hydroelectric, such as the water lily water turbine, if you have a creek or other moving water source. You can do wind with a small wind turbine if you're in a windy area. Or you can even do thermoelectric if no other option is available by suspending a thermoelectric generator above your campfire embers or coals. Each of those deserve a video to themselves, so look forward to that in the future. One of my goals is to open up exploration of the world to everyone. Personal electric vehicles like electric skateboards are a great way to do that, and I don't want range anxiety to be a limiting factor out in the wilderness. Whether backpacking in remote areas with an electric rideable, or simply going on day trips while out at a remote cabin, I hope this video has helped break down some of the barriers for you. I'll be exploring portable energy generation in great detail in the future, ranging from simply keeping your electronics or your e-skate batteries charged all the way up to portable wilderness charging solutions for my cyber truck. And again, Amazon affiliate links are in the description for all of the parts I showed in this video, as well as a few other methods if you want to experiment. If you're new to the channel, I combine fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences, such as skate packing, which is backpacking while on my electric skateboard. Check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you next week.